Well, I decided that I might as well show you guys my new welder. Um, Chicago Electric Harbor Freight type welder. And I'm going to explain some welding tips too. And uh, how to get a fairly good bead. I'm not a professional by any means at all. But these are kind of, I'm going to show you how to get a fairly smooth bead like this. Could be better. As you can see, I kind of picked up speed too much there. It's really important to try to keep a steady bead. And this is actually, I was demonstrating actually to someone how it looks like if you do not use circles. And that's a straight bead there. That's without circles there. Not a very good bead. You don't want that. So this is a uh, gasless welder. It's a 90 amp flux. Um, you can pick them up for like 120 bucks or something like that. So, there, if you go up and get a Craftsman welder or something like this, you'll spend maybe a little more, like 180 or something. So, for Harbor Freight, you know, and I, I haven't seen anything but good reviews. Sleeting too. So, I also got a, a automatic darkening helmet. Very much better than these because you should be using two hands to weld, especially if you're beginners. I actually, when I weld, I put on these gloves here and I actually hold up like right before the tip here. Hold this little whatever it is made out of. And hold that and I can actually perfect my circles and get it more steady. And, and that should help you out, especially with doing beads. I want to definitely make sure you get, you get some of these here. Uh, you get these with the kit. Uh, actually, you get a cheaper one. So here, you get the manual and stuff. Spare tip. And uh, you get one of these brushes here. You got, the little, you got the little metal thing in the top that breaks off some of the crud that you get on these. Because this is a... Uh, this welder is non-gas welder. It has a special type of wire into it that works as the argon gas. So what happens is... is um, Leaves a bunch of this like really dusty looking stuff behind, and you just gotta. Sometimes it gets caught inside the welds and stuff, and you gotta break it free. Sometimes it usually just brushes right off. So, all right, I'll show you welding. Um, how to do some. I can probably only really show you a tack weld. Pretty much what you do when you're tack welding something, you tack weld. Like let's say I want to weld these together, which they're not already. Like, let's say there weren't, you actually just do a little tack, put a little tack, you just hold it there, and you, uh, just hold it there just for a little bit, maybe, I don't know, like two seconds or so, depending on the wire speed and stuff, and the heat, and you just put that tack there, and maybe you know, one on the other end, and tacks are very easy to break better, but you also want them to be able to hold the metal while you put your nice bead nice big bead on there to hold it together and you can actually break free the tacks you don't want to you actually don't want to do that curving pattern when you do the tacks either because then you're fusing the metals together these actually just barely fuse the metal together and I'll kind of show you it's kind of tacks are actually fairly easy but they're hard to explain so I'm actually not going to some people don't even weld with gloves I think you should There. And you want it out about a half an inch, it's a little over, but that's good. So, pack weld. All you do is you get it right down between there. Oops. Like that. As you can see, that is what is referred to as it doesn't have the gas on there. Give you this really dusty looking stuff, not an issue at all. So, that's that little tack weld. You put one on this end, and then that's when you do your bead. Of course, I cannot do a good, very good bead with just my hands there. So, I will have to uh, this camera or something, and I'll just show you what the result is. Uh, when you do welds, either way, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. But when you're actually doing welds, when you're doing a weld, you want to actually do little like circle lights, like almost L shapes. 
you want to go real slowly and a steady pace as you can see I speed up and then slow down a little bit here and you want to really kind of stack those beads up like that and that way you also want to make them somewhat pretty wide so that way you can get uh, metal to actually fuse together because it actually melts the metal just like a hair but if you like a tack weld barely melts the metal so you want to actually get the uh, metal fused together and the tack weld of course it's nothing to it really, it's just barely holding the metal together and that just holds the metal actually just enough so that way you can do your actual bead so of course people just thought that you just take the gun and just go like sorry guys you don't know how to weld, it takes a little bit of course I'm not a professional either if this is not a really good looking bead but I think if I tried a little harder I think I'd get it a little better so we'll start getting going and I'll show you how to do it. Well, by no means is that any better than the other one, but because I did actually get it a little bit too fast here and then slow it down just a little bit, and I stopped right here and I started back up, so it's two different beads right here. As you can see, so let me show you kind of what a better weld is. Uh, I do know the techniques, but I just need to get a steadier hand and stuff in welding. Ooh, look at that. From all the smoke. Especially the non gaseous ones give off a lot of smoke. That's a good weld. It's a weld speed too fast. Sticking out too long. That's if it sticks out just a little bit too long. Um, I was actually sticking half an inch which you should actually maintain around a half an inch uh, so I was sticking out just because it was going all the way down there take some skill to actually weld across here two circle pieces of metal so I mean that's pretty hard to metal I should have picked uh, well I should have picked something better to show you on but see well this is how it just be current too high wire feed too fast that's when it actually splatters out and puddles and stuff and it actually sounds like a instead of like a sounds like like air it sounds like and then, and then you look at it well then it's like there's nothing there it was actually just kind of the weld that's usually when it happens is when the wire speed and what happens is or just like turned it up like too high and what happens is it's just burning up the wire and it's not and you're going too fast with it, it barely is giving out any wire, so. You know, um, has a pretty powerful fan on here and stuff. And otherwise, it's a good welder. I'll show you some of the insides and show you the different metal gauges. Since I'm running out of video space, it's right there. Thank you.